went into it thinking that breastfeeding was going to be a certain way. I was stressed over the last nine months completely about my milk supply going up and down. He had bit me really hard and I was crying. I will say a lot of people, a lot of people, and the most popular response I got from people was... Good morning. I am just sitting outside on my deck this morning. Uh, my son is sleeping inside and his white noise machine makes quite a bit of sound. So when I came outside, I heard all the beautiful birds chirping. The bird song today is wonderful. So I figured this way you guys can hear the birds too. If you're new here, my name is Ashley. I am the mom in that hippie family. My son is almost 10 months old now. He's about nine and a half months. And today we're gonna to talk about my breastfeeding journey, which has been different than what I was expecting, to say the least. Right from the get-go, I always knew I wanted to at least try breastfeeding. It was just something that I felt if I could do it, it would be really important to me to give it my all. And in the beginning, it was really good. It went really well. I had no problems with latching. I didn't even really have any pain in the first couple weeks of breastfeeding. He took to it really good and so did I. Luckily, it was really good. One thing I really want to talk about in this video, and this is why I'm sharing this, is that when I went into breastfeeding, there was so much information. I wanted to be as prepared as possible so that I could because I did know that it can be very challenging for some people. There can be a lot of situations or circumstances that lead to not being able to breastfeed either through the mother or the baby and so I wanted to do everything that I could in my power to make sure that I understood all of the variations that might come to play so that I could handle them if in fact I did need to. Luckily I didn't have any complications myself and neither did Floyd but I think I was overwhelmed with information. I went into it thinking that breastfeeding was going to be a certain way, um, that it was going to be really hard, that I was gonna have so much milk, I would be leaking everywhere, that it would be exploding, that it would be sore, that I would be engorged all the time, that the pumping and between feedings and that it would, it, I was just very overwhelmed. And I do want it to say that that is not for everybody. Personally, I never pumped because, oh my God, that's a huge spider right there. Just stay there. You stay there. I'm gonna stay here. All right. I never pumped because I found it to be even more work when I was already exhausted from having a newborn and breastfeeding in itself. So I never, I never pumped. It was just so much easier when he's hungry, throw him on the boob, continue on with our day. I just didn't have the time it felt like to pump and I was okay with that and my husband Chad was fine with that as well and it worked out really well for us and it has been working really well for us. I think personally the um, engorgement comes maybe from overproducing. I think in my situation because I solely breastfed my son, I never had an oversupply of milk. My body produces exactly the amount of milk that my son needs exactly when he needs it. It's actually amazing how our bodies do that. I would stress over the last nine months completely about my milk supply going up and down. Because when you don't pump, you don't know how much you're producing. You don't have any way to tell. Another thing that was a um, misconception to me was that I would have like a, a letdown. So when I would feed on one side, the other side would be, um, it's called letdown when it comes out as well. And I've never had that. I've never had to use a haka on one side while I'm feeding on the other side because like I said, I only produce exactly how much milk my son needs. I don't underproduce. I'm producing what he needs. It's interesting. So when he's teething and he's comfort nursing more, I just have more supply and when he's not really into it and he just feeds 
when he's hungry, my body produces that too. I have never, I have been engorged. We have chickens, so along with the beautiful birds, you get the chicken squawks too. Hopefully that's not too annoying. I've only been engorged maybe twice, and it was not painful engorgement. It was, I was just quite full because he, we were busy and he didn't want to feed. He was distracted or playing or we were in a car or doing something and he just didn't eat at that time. But I've never been engorged to the point of pain at all. And now I'm not suggesting to anybody to don't pump or do it this way or anything like that. I just want to share my experience because I was really confused in the beginning. Like, am I not producing enough? Like, I don't have letdown and my boobs aren't leaking. I don't have to wear nursing pads. Where is all my milk? And I think that stressed me out so much and it was completely unnecessary. Uh, I've talked to some other moms when I was going through this and asked them, like, did you leak? What was your experience like? And they also, some said that they were like me. They only produced what they needed to. And then some also said that it was insane. They had so much milk. They didn't know what to do with it, which is also good. It's nice to have an extra supply because we live in a tiny house on wheels. I don't have a way to store milk. So that was another reason why I don't necessarily pump because our freezer is not big. <laughs> I don't have any way to keep extra milk. Would be wonderful to use in uh, making baby food and things. And maybe down the road if I stop breastfeeding it would be nice to have breast milk still. Which leads me to my second point and the reason why I'm making this video. It's been nine months now and he has teeth. He has four on top and two on bottom now. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen my recent post. Of, um, I was very upset one day. He had bit me really hard and I was crying and it was really hard. Like the emotional part of breastfeeding, when they inflict pain on you because he'll bite me and then he'll look at me and laugh because it, he gets a reaction. I scream out in pain or I cry and he doesn't understand that so he thinks it's entertaining, which is great, like that's awesome. I provide my body for you for the last 18 months and you're now inflicting pain and laughing at me. Cool, thanks, thanks a lot. But you have to understand that they don't know that. They don't understand that. When I made this Instagram post, I had a lot of wonderful people reach out and give me some tips and advice and I want to share that with you. Because the biting has made me consider stop breastfeeding and I don't want to stop breastfeeding. I really want to continue on with it. I had originally thought I would just do it to 12 months, but now that I'm even looking into options after, I think I would like to continue on for the full two years. We're not vegan, but we don't, Chad is lactose intolerant, so we don't have dairy in the house and I personally have never liked milk. I never drank milk when I was a baby and I never drank milk growing up. I don't put milk on my cereal. I just don't like dairy. I don't know. It, body intuition maybe. I just have never been a fan of dairy. So the options when they reach 12 months is, is pretty much dairy. There are other options as well which I might look into but then I feel like the best is for us to still continue on with breastfeeding if I don't want to go down the dairy route route. Tips and tricks from my people on Instagram. I love you guys. If you're watching this, you are so awesome. You've been so, so helpful. I will say a lot of people, a lot of people, and the most popular response I got from people was that the first time their child bit them and they either screamed out in pain or freaked out um, and scared their child to, into never doing it again. <laughs> Which I think I've always tried to be really calm when it happens and redirect. I just give him something else to bite and I say no biting and I try to be calm. But maybe if I had at this point, I think it's too late because we've created this like biting habit. Um, he's not scared. He already knows about it. And, and if I were to scream out now, I think he gets a kick out of the reaction more than anything. So that didn't work for us. But a lot of people had said they've scared their children first bite into never doing it again. Sounds like that could work really well. Um, a lot of people have also suggested what I 
have been trying, which is just to uh, calmly, assertively tell them no biting mommy, you're hurting me right now, and take the boob away until um, they've given some time to maybe let go of the focus on the biting or whatever and try again later. <sighs> he still bites. He bites so much and it hurts and I just can't stand it anymore. What I've been trying actually is a really interesting tip somebody gave me that, um, tell me if you try this too. It might sound counterproductive, but it's been working. When I'm feeding Floyd and he bites me, instead of pull him off, because what he would do when I would try to pull him off is he would clench down on my nipple and pull. And so like even just getting my nipple out of his mouth when he's biting is like terrifying. So someone said to push their face into you, almost as if you're suffocating them, but obviously no suffocating babies, okay? That's not what we're doing here, but you push his face into your boob so it's all full of boob and then he goes oh, and let he lets go and he didn't really like that and it was a lot easier for me to get my nipple out of his mouth that way than to pull it off and so I've done that twice and it's only been a few days but the and the teething has also subsided a little bit I haven't been bit in a few days I think that might be working for us and so I'm going to continue to use that method if the biting does arise again. Breastfeeding is definitely a journey. It has its highs and its lows. There are times when it's exhausting and there are times when my body just wants to be done with it and then I think about it. After all of this biting and I started thinking about maybe it's time we switch to formula or milk or just something else and then you get sad thinking about losing that little bit of connection that you have with them. I mean that time will come. He will not be on the boob forever but I'm kind of still enjoying being needed in that way so I would love to continue on with it as long as possible but when the time comes either he weans himself or it's time for me to wean him, then I'll be okay with that and so will he and we'll move on to the next stage of childhood. If you're watching this, I just want you to know that everybody's experience is completely different and you are normal. Whatever you're going through is your normal. If you produce a lot or if you don't produce a lot, it's okay. Just focus on you and your baby and don't compare yourself to other people because your journey is your journey. And if you run into the biting, issue. Try some of these things. If you've tried them all, let me know. If you have a unique tip that I haven't heard, I would love to hear that too. Stay strong because oh do I know the hurt and sadness that comes along with the biting that I, I never expected it to be like that. Always remember a fed baby is best. Thanks for watching. We put out videos twice weekly. We usually do a Monday fun day which is a vlog with the whole family. My Thursday videos are usually more geared towards motherhood and baby life. I really enjoy making those as well. So subscribe if you want to check out some of that. We live in a tiny house on wheels so it's pretty unique how we navigate this little world of ours. Thanks for watching as always. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. We will have a great rest of our day and I will see you in the next video.